Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to do some use auto on silver. This is from US Open Auto 2018 multiplayer rule. So let me just summarize the problem statement real quick. So we're going to be given like a square matrix type of 2D array. Um, so what we have to do is, you know, we have to find the maximum number of adjacent values of, of the same value. So like, you know, here the sample thing they gave us, they put the 9, because first, we have this 9, and by adjacent, they mean we go up, down, left, or right, so we can't go diagonal, right? So let's see, let me show you what it would be for 9, we could go down, right? So it would be 1, 2, and then we can go left, 3, and then we can go down again, 4, and then left again, 5, and then there are no more 9s, like adjacent, so that's about it, that's 5. That's the first part of the answer, but there is also something else they want us to do. So, like these cows would team up uh, in pairs, like in a pair. So, we have two instead of one value. This time we can have nine and like three, say, you know, or nine and one. So basically, we're gonna basically we're considering the one. We're gonna count the one as well. So here it would be nine, nine. You know, we got. 991 nine, which is you know three of them and then three more here and three more here right so that's 10 so it, that's basically like um the sample what they gave us so the algorithm which we're going to use is um what Paul, if you're not familiar familiar with that is basically you have a starting index so let me even go um, let me go back actually you are going to iterate through the whole array like a 2d array right and you have a starting index, which is obviously going to be this, right? And if it has, you know, you're always going to go up, down, left, right, okay? And when you go there, you're going to check if, you know, you're going to check some condition. That's the general case, but in the specific case, we're just going to check if the value is the same as the value at you know, up, down, left, right? And for two, it's obviously not. And for three, it's not as well. But for nine, there is one um, uh, nine, which is below it. So we'll call the flood fill for that nine as well. And then from there, we, we also have a nine on its left. So then we'll all again call flood fill for this, and then again for this and for this. But what happens here is that there are no more nines. Um, so it basically stops. It doesn't call itself. It's a recursive function basically. So that's what, um, for the first part, that's it. And let, uh, when I actually show you my code, I'll show you what I did for the second part of the question, which is where it's like very similar. Like they're, they're almost the same, just a little difference, okay? And let me see. Yeah, that's all about it. Let me show you my code, uh, my code in Java. And this is obviously not a live solve. Um, so you guys know statics, these are really useful. You always remember how to use the word static if you want to be able to use it in any methods, right? So I have these uh, static just because I don't want to call them. I don't want to, you know, pass them as, you know, uh, parameters uh, to flood fill function. I, it could just access them if it's a global thing, right? So here we got a bunch of input, right? And the visited arrays, I forgot to tell you about it. The visited array, make sure we don't run into the infinite loop situation. Let me show you what it would be like. So here, as I said, you would, let's say, let's actually use nine because like it is the one that has the, you know, case it. So you go down from nine, and then you're going to check up, down, left, right. So then it will go back to this nine, and it will keep going forever. You know what I mean? So you have to make sure that never happens. So you're going to have a visited array to make sure nine is visited. It's like a check checkbox. Therefore, this nine will not go back to the top, and similarly, this nine would not go back to this nine. Just you know, you need that. Otherwise, it's an infinite loop, and your flood fill algorithm is a waste. So that's the visited. And there are two because we have two answers, right? And two answers again. Integer dot min value. I'll always do that because we are trying to find the max, so it's good to assign it to min. In this case, you can just call it zero, but like I just like to do it, it's like more like a habit again. So this is our flood fill. Flood fill. Um, actually, this is not the flood fill. This is just you know we're gonna iterate through the array that part. And if it's already visited by the flood fill of some other um, number, you know, some other value, we're just gonna continue the loop. And we always set the count to zero, and we're gonna call flood fill on that particular index. And our answer is gonna be max of count and current 
answer. Let me go to flood fill. So we are going to be given the indexes, uh, indices, and the value itself, which we have to check at each, you know, each flood fill call. And if it's not listed, which you know, in the first call it's not, obviously not going to be listed, then we're going to set it to true. Th therefore, it won't be, you know, a game. It won't happen in the internet. You know what I mean? Uh, and then we're going to increase, increment the count. And again, we're going to flood fill. This is the main part. So it's, this is this part checks. I believe it's up. Because it's the i, it's the row variable, so the row uh, index. So it's gonna check the up, down. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the up, and then the left, and then the down, and then the right. So it's gonna check these, and again, make we have to make sure we have this visited, or otherwise it's gonna be a mess. So, and we're gonna reset the count every time we call, you know, we call the flood fill, because like otherwise it's gonna add up to other stuff and. It's gonna be a mess. That's why I made it the you know static global thing. Um, yeah, that's uh, answer one, which is straightforward, right? Answer two is just a little bit trickier, but like it's the same thing. You, you can actually see it's the same thing. Um, I'm gonna call count two again equals zero, and I'll explain why I have this thing in just a second. So let's go just to this real quick. And if, if j is greater than zero, and great. Um, so as I said. Uh, let me go there real quick. Okay, for the second part, you don't want to check all the numbers in the grid. You just want to check for each index the ones that are adjacent to it. So for two, it would be three and four. For this, uh, this nine, it would be three, four, nine, nine. Right. So you only want to check the adjacent ones. But what, what I discovered, which is pretty cool, is you don't even have to check all the adjacent. You just have to check the one to its left or right or down or up. So it's like. For two, you can only check three because what happens is, if, in case there's a possibility you have to, you know, there's something here that's better, what will happen eventually is like this thing will check, you know, like the actual flood field we call, it will check all directions. So eventually, that, you know, the thing which you didn't check would also be part of it. It's hard to explain that part, but like it actually makes sense. So you actually don't have to call the up, down, left, right for this specific order. You just have to call, as you see, I only call the left. So for each one, I only call the left, right? And then the flood flow is going to be called uh, on the adjacent uh, value and the current value. And this AND condition is just to make sure two adjacent values are not equal. I mean, if they're equal, there's no point in calling the flood flow, right? You, you, you you'd want two different values. And it's clearly mentioned in the problem statement, you have to have two. So like, yeah, basically. <laughs> so let me see. Yeah. And flood fill two is literally the same thing, except you have two wells instead of one. And we have an R condition. It could equal the first one or the second one, right? And yeah. And then we just outdoor print LN. Those answers close. Oh, this condition is just to make sure there was like a bunch of you know specific you know outlier cases type things where you know you can only have two numbers like two specific values like one two one two and like a big you know array and then it will check for each single index and that's gonna time out for sure because it's gonna iterate through the whole array right therefore I just made sure if once the answer is equal to n square which is the max it could be just break the loop you know not to save some uh, time space whatnot and it worked so yeah. That's the algorithm. Flipful. If you don't know it, like you know, look it up. It's really useful for silver. And yeah. So thank you for watching, and hopefully see you next time.